going on guys it's your boy avp here i'm back again with another banger with another video today we're debunking 10 things airline industries and frankly the aviation industry don't want you and i finding out let's get started thank you by the way for 56 subscribers my, like we've doubled we like from from last i i said thank you to my subs thank you so much for those of you guys who actually do take the time out there to subscribe to like comment all that good stuff keep it going keep it flowing all right here's the first thing that airline industries don't want you to know first of all it's a really dirty industry like dirty by me like by dirty i mean it actually hurts the environment that's that's the kind of dirty i mean like the air pollu uh, p pollution that comes out of the aviation industry is outrageously surprising. Like it is just one of the most notorious industries when it comes to dirtying the environments, uh, the environment out there. So, uh, yeah, this is actually 99.9% .9 of aviation fuel is the dirty kind of fuel. I, I, I mentioned this in my last video. Well, actually, on my, on, on my other video, I'll put a link to that video up here somewhere. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, aviation industry is one of the most it's one of the dirtiest industries out there. When it comes to the environment, it's very harmful to the environment. The fuel that we kind of use right now, unfortunately, we don't have as many options though to explore. But I think that we do. But it's just really it's expensive exploring those options. The second thing that airline industries don't want you finding out is that. Uh, those oxygen masks that they drop down every single time there's an emergency popping up or whatever or Yeah, you probably haven't seen them drop down though before or if you have I'm sorry for going through the traumatic experience, but we move on the fact is They don't want you finding out that those oxygen masks only last you 15 minutes actually and this is actually attributed to the fact that there is a barium peroxide chemical cocktail within within the oxygen tanks now barium peroxide is actually not harmful to you and i it's actually safer than just having tanks filled up with oxygen gas which is actually flammable and explosive so uh yeah oxygen tanks are normally used by amateur rocket builders for their rockets um, so, yeah, that's how explosive oxygen is, actually. You don't want to be using just oxygen on board an airplane. It's actually just not safe. All right, the third thing that these airline industries don't want you and I finding out is the fact that sometimes airplanes fly without screws. Sorry, let me rectify that. They fly with missing screws on the wings of the airplane. Now... I understand as an engineer, as an aeronautical engineer, why this happens. I mean, we actually designed airplane wings to withstand those load cycles without those rivets in there. Just know sometimes what airlines would do is they would just slap on aviation tape in there. Aviation tape is actually really, really durable and really strong, but it's not a permanent solution. We just use it for temporary fixes just to you know, just to make sure that, you know, the passengers don't panic that much. Um, that tape is actually really good at holding, you know, aircraft skin or aluminum skin together um, on an airplane. So you don't have to worry much about that. The fact that those seats are getting smaller. Listen to me. Seats are getting smaller. One, because what's happening, it, it, well, we, we don't really have much leg room right now on airplanes. And this is actually because, you know, airlines, so they have some data analysts that look at that and go, oh, hey, actually, you guys, we can actually increase our profit margins here by decreasing the leg room between the passengers. What that will do is it will allow us to squeeze more seats. More seats means more money coming in for us. Because think about it, even if you squeeze in 10 more seats, guys, on an airplane, that is a lot of money coming from those 10 more people on that same airplane, if you think about it, over time. The fifth thing right here I wanna mention about airlines that they don't tell you and I about is the fact that there's 45 minutes worth of extra fuel 
on board every single aircraft that you fly. I got to play the devil's out, you know, advocate here. The reason why, you know, the poor, the poor airlines out there do this is actually because of safety purposes or emergency purposes for you and I, just in case AVP decides, hey, I feel like robbing an airplane today. You know, there's at least extra fuel on board for the pilots to go land on an emergency airport nearby. And that extra fuel is for those kind of circumstances and situations. Um, sometimes it's just like, hey, we're running out of fuel. We got lost. At least we got extra fuel over here to land on an emergency airport that's nearby and refill. So that's just one of the other reasons that, uh, yeah, we have that four to five minute extra fuel on board. Other thing that airlines actually, this is one of the nasty ones right here. And I get angry just telling you guys about this. They overbook seats, airlines overbook seats just for profit sakes. I mean, by the way, airlines are allowed to only occupy 75% off available seats on an airplane. Don't go beyond that. Why? Because passengers come in with luggage, there's fuel on board, there's other, you know, weight considerations that pilots have to take into account when flying aircraft. Airlines do this so that they can get the money out of you and I. And they know they're not going to fill up those seats. And the reason why they're not going to fill them up is because those people are going to run late. They're going to bump into some security somewhere. They're going to get stuck in traffic somewhere. They are, I'm telling you now, airlines are very sneaky and snoopy around this, this matter right here. I, I, this, I believe airlines do, just to increase their profit margins. So next time you fly, look around you. Those empty seats, somebody paid for that seat, actually. It's just that they're not there and you'll never know about them because that's not information that you have access to. It's classified. It's a company. You can't access that information. Other thing, number seven. Okay, now I I have to I have to warn you here. Let me tell you now, those toilets that you think are locked are actually not locked, technically speaking. There's a little silver knob this this just above the occupancy indicator you can literally you can just pop that thing open you know you know push your finger in and get that latch open i gotta say though this is for emergency purposes sometimes kids lock themselves up you know in those toilets some sometimes people faint in there and the flight attendant has to you know find a way to open the door from the outside so it's for safety purposes in an airplane but just know if you're going to be naughty on an airplane next time or if you're planning on doing something snoopy it's easy for me to open up the door from the outside also don't be creepy don't be going out there and trying this out whilst there is a person in there don't be a creep just just don't here's the other thing that airlines actually don't tell you about airlines actually take in dead bodies around the world and they fly them up so you might have flown <clears throat> on an airplane before with the dead body inside and i'm talking like a dead corpse like a casket kind of like dead corpse a little cat well a dead corpse in a in a cast a dead body in a casket not that airlines murder people it's just that sometimes family members need to be transporting people from one country to the next just so they could go bury them in their home country or whatever right yes this happens the easiest way to do it is to fly them across the world and airlines actually do take this in it's just that they will charge you though a lot of money and i mean a lot of money but a lot of money i mean they'll charge you probably i don't know two times to five times the amount of money it would cost you to get just a normal plane ticket so normal airplane ticket <sighs> i'm devastated don't you guys ever do that in fact i should mention that an airplane is actually one of the creepiest places you could find yourself to be in today. Here's a ninth thing about airplanes that I hate and that suck. The fact that the water that they sell you or the glass of water they give you in airplanes is actually contaminated with bacteria called E. coli, which is actually harmful to the human body. This is just one of those things that like are super tragic. Like, why do you clean the water tank once a year? Like, why can't you just clean it up, like, regularly, like normal people would do? Like, just clean up that water tank, like, regularly, man. Don't, don't, don't give us bad water. But I would suggest 
don't don't ever order a bottle of water or a glass of water or an airplane just bring your own bottled water or something like that right but just don't go around ordering anything like that if you're an alcohol drinker i think you're in the safe zone here um all things considered regarding alcohol you and i are not your order water or an airplane ever again in our lives you bring your own water if you're thirsty buy some water at the airport before you take that flight all right that's my suggestion try to make sure you don't get that bacteria because it's actually very harmful um yes there have not been any like serious reported cases about people dying from e coli or suffering from e coli you know from drinking airplane water or whatever or anything like that so but but you know it's something of caution that you and i need to consider because i want you to be safe out there if you're going to be flying yeah, I want you to be safe out there. You Do you hear me? Last thing is that you actually lose your sense of taste when you eat airplane food. Now, this is a fact that has been known for quite a while now. I just decided to just like snoop it in there, scoop it in there, squeeze it in there. Uh, but the reason why is actually because the air out there is actually dry, the pressure is lower, and your body just doesn't know how to really react to that. And so it dials down one of your senses, I think, because it thinks you're a, a different, I don't know, but your body just regulates itself a little bit weird, weird to the point where your taste buds just like drop in terms of being effective. And so you, food just tastes, tastes really, really dull. Remember, this is a pressurized cabin, but as much as it's a pressurized tube that you're in, it's it's not a the pressure will always not be the same as the pressure on the ground right but it's a lower pressure up there so even though it's pressurized but that pressure right there is actually lower compared to the pressure on the ground this is one of the reasons why it's going to be super slow to transition from fuel aircraft to electric aircraft but hey i i'm very optimistic about the future here in terms of electric aircraft but we'll see how things work out guys all right by the way help your boy out here i am trying to get to 100 subscribers by the end of the 31st of February 2022. It's a fictitious date. I'm putting it out there. Help me out, man, all right? It's been great being with you guys over here. Sub to the channel at this point where it'd be really nice. Click that red button right there. Hit the thumbs up button, okay? And leave a comment down below. Let me know about which one of these is actually your worst nightmare kind of pet peeve. Or I might not have even mention it uh, right here in this video, but leave leave a comment down below and let me know about one of the things that you hate about the airline industry or the aviation industry that they do and they don't tell us about, okay? Let's educate each other out here, folks. I've been AVP and I'll see you guys when I see you guys.